Hey everybody, welcome to another video here from Robotic Motor Services. Today we're going to talk about fine charging station settings. Uh, a lot of people get confused by this because, well, it is a bit confusing on paper, but uh, if you can see it here in the layout like we have on our trusty whiteboard, and then we'll show you in the mower how you adjust these settings and everything, hopefully you'll understand a little bit better and see that it's not as intimidating as it sounds on paper. So we have our auto mower out here in our work area. This is our charging station here. We've got a flower bed, flower bed, a shed, you know, the average yard. You could have more crap in it. Uh, you could have less in it. <laughs> but just for educational purposes, this is how we're doing it here. We have guide one and we have guide two. So the mower is out here mowing. It's time for it to get back to the charging station. It needs to find a way to get back there. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to look for a guide wire because it knows that the guide wire is the direct route back to the charging station. That is, you know, the fastest way for it to get back there. It will save time and all that good stuff. If it can't find a guide wire, it will then follow a boundary wire as soon as it comes in contact with a boundary wire. So it will follow the boundary wire until it picks up the signal from a guide wire. Once it picks up the signal from a guide wire, the guide wire will take priority over the boundary wire. And it will follow that guide wire until it gets up here by the charging station. At that point, the signal coming out from the charging station through the air takes priority over everything. That would be the, uh, the far signal. And the far signal will get it in close, and then the near signal will line it up and, and uh, have a drive in air to sync up with the uh, the charging contacts on the charging station. So your three settings that you have um, really in your your fine charging station settings are for the charging station itself and then you have the delay time for your guide wires and your boundary wires. The delay time is where people get confused. From the factory I believe it's like uh, 10 minutes for a boundary wire and uh, like five minutes or something for a guide wire. can't really remember off the top of my head. Now, the reason for that is, is because they're hoping that the mower just kind of wandering around on its own, you know, using GPS mowing or just by freak luck, will get close enough or find its own way back to where it'll pick up that signal from the charging station and go back to the charging station. The reason for this is the more random it goes, the less opportunity there is for tracks to develop in your lawn. Now, if you remember watching our video on corridor settings, if you didn't watch it, you probably should because that's going to come in handy after you learn how all this stuff works. If the mower is falling on top of this guide wire all the time, it's going to create tracks. So the mower is always trying to deviate the best it can to avoid tracks. That's just programmed into it. That's the, that's the way it's designed to work, to try to avoid leaving tracks through your grass. So that's the reason why you have those delay times. If you set the delay time down, let's say on your guide wire, you set that delay time down to three minutes, that means, okay, we're down to about 17% battery power in our mower, time to find a charging station. So it's just gonna mill around out here and you know try to find its way back to the charging station on its own. Now the three minutes have passed. Now it knows, uh-oh, I need to really start searching for the guide wire. I need to take this seriously because my three minutes are up. So then when it finds the guide wire, straight back to the charging station it goes. Now, the boundary wire, if you still have it set at 10 minutes, it'll keep looking around for that guide wire after that, that time you have the guide wire delay set to. It'll start looking around for the guide wire, and even if it comes over here to the boundary wire, it's not really going to pay attention to that boundary wire because it's supposed to be searching for the guide wire. The 10 minutes isn't up yet, so it's not, it's not really paying any attention to that boundary wire. So now after 10 minutes, that's when, let's say it's, it's over here, and it's down in here, and it's searching for its way home. The 10 minutes are up. It's going to find that signal from that, guide, or from that boundary wire, and it's going to start following that boundary wire. And as I said, then when it comes to the guide wire, it's going to take that guide wire back instead of the boundary wire. Now, if it's, um, let's say it's over in here, and that time is up 
for it to start taking the boundary wire, then it's just going to follow the boundary wire around and it'll pick up the signal from the charging station and then it goes. If it's down here, it could take the boundary wire around this way, pick up the guide wire and back it goes. So that's what the delay times are. You don't want to set your delay time down to, you know, like one minute or anything like that, because that's going to help um, avoid the tracking through the lawn. You know, you're going to give the mower more time to just search randomly around instead of it, you know, being down here and jumping on this guide wire right away. It's going to roam around and it might come across and get on it up here. So you're not going to constantly be having those long tracks drawn out where the mower is taking that same guide wire back every time right away. And it really just gives the mower a little bit of time to roam around and figure things out on its own. Now, if you have a situation where, like, let's say you have a fence or something like that, or, you know, the mower is going pretty far away from the charging station, then you want to make might want to make it more of a priority to hit that guide wire a lot faster or that boundary wire a lot faster um, to get it back to the charging station right away. Another time too, where it is actually beneficial to set those times down pretty low is if your mower is getting up there in years and you haven't replaced the battery yet and it gets down to that, that 20%, depending on how far it has to go, that 20% might go pretty quick and you might get one of those situations where the mower gets to here and dies you know, right in front of the charging station. That always sucks. <laughs> so that's where it would pay, you know, if you're trying to limp it along through the rest of the season to set that delay time down. Now, the other option that you have, again, is to adjust the signal coming out from the charging station. And you'd say, well, why would I have to adjust that? Why is there a low, medium, and a high? Well, as I said, there's a near and a far signal. The far is when the mower's out here and the, uh, the charging station puts out its signal and just sucks the thing in like a tractor beam from, uh, from Star Wars or something and pulls it right into the charging station. Now, if it's, let's say it's over here, depending on how wide this area is right here, what can happen is if this is set too high, then that signal is going to travel across this flower bed right here. The mower is going to get to here and it's going to start being pulled in by the signal. And because that signal takes priority over the guide wire and over the boundary wire, what will happen is the mower will just sit here and it will frantically try to go through this boundary wire. And it will turn around and it will come back to it and it just won't be able to go anywhere. And it will start, you know, just going forward and back and forward and back and turning to where it just rips up all the grass right there. You'll have nothing left. It just, it just tears it up because it's so confused and trying to go back and forth so often. And possibly could just end up dying there i've seen that happen quite a few times on uh some you know uh setups like this and usually it was a flower bed that was in the way that was the culprit uh you know the, the mower gets so close to the charging station and just doesn't take that path the rest of the way around there to get to the charging station so if you set this down to you know medium uh depending again on the width of this flower bed then you could be okay and the mower could get to here and say, oh, there's my boundary wire. I'm going to follow that around. Oh, there's my guide wire. And I'm home. So that's why there is a, a setting for the, uh, the charging station signal that it puts out. Now, in some rare cases, because this is a you know, thin distance here, you might even have to go with it down to low. Now, what that's going to do is that's going to affect it you know, everywhere around. So then it's going to become more of a priority to make sure that the mower can find its guide wires easily and its boundary wires easily because it's not going to be able to pick up that signal from the charging station when it's over here. It's not going to be able to pick that up from as far away. So you want to make sure that you have your guide wires routed properly and you have your delay times adjusted just right to where you're not getting the, uh, the tracking. You're not getting um, any kind of other issues coming up from that that shortened or um, lowered delay time for any of those methods to get home. And honestly, I mean, it, it really depends on your layout. When it comes to mowers like a, a 450X, 450XH, 430X, 430XH, uh, the 500 series, you know, all the ones with multiple guide wires, then, uh, then it's a little bit easier to, to lay all this out. And you don't have to rely on your boundary wires as much. You go with, uh, you know, a 300 series mower, we have one guide wire, 
then you know if you erased this guide wire over here and you just have the one here you would probably yeah you, know, you would change that a little bit to come down over to here but still when the motor's up here it's going to be really important now to have your boundary wire delay time adjusted just right because you only got that one guide wire and that motor's over here in no man's land and it's got to find its way back so uh, that's that's a time there where you might want to adjust the boundary wire delay time down when you have a, a, a more complex layout, more objects for the mower to get, get around to get back home, and it's a 300 series with only one guide wire. Uh, if you have the, the 400 series or 500 series, as I was saying, it's not as common to have to worry or rely on the boundary wires because you have the extra guides, but there is always scenarios where you're using that boundary wire as a definite method to get a mower you know through a corridor or something like that because you had to use your guide wires for something else like say you're going through a, a, a gate and a fence down here in the corner or something and you had to have the guide wire to get through there you know and you couldn't have one up here so hopefully uh, that explains the delay times and the fine charging station settings and when and how to use them now we'll show you how you adjust all this stuff on the app and on the mowers themselves. Now here on the mower to change these settings, you're gonna highlight installation. That's the one with the arrow and the blades of grass. You're gonna hit okay. And then find charging station, second option. So you use your down arrow, go to that, hit okay. And <clears throat> here you go, you have your guide and you have your boundary and you have charger. So this is where you can change all this stuff around. We'll hit okay on boundary. And here you can, you can change all this or you can disable it. And if you go here to more, then it's gonna have a method for you to test going out the right boundary wire or going out the left boundary wire. Go back here and your guide wires, same way. You have the delay time there at three minutes. If you hit the okay button, then you're going to be able to set the individual delays for each guide wire, or you're going to be able to disable them. Or if you go over to more, that's where you'll be able to down here. That's where you'll be able to test them going out each of the guide wires. And then obviously, uh, you know, with the charging station, we told you there's um, high, minimum, or I mean, minimum, medium, and maximum there. So hit OK on that. And there's your power range. You got maximum, you got mid, and minimum. So just select what you want, hit OK. And then once you hit OK, then hit the back button and it'll save that. Then after you're done with changing all that stuff around, all you got to do is hit the, uh, the back button to get back to the menu or hit the menu button. Or if you're ready to start, you can just hit the start button and follow the prompts. And that's it for uh, adjusting your settings for fine charging station on the actual mower. The one you're seeing here obviously was a 450X. That's why you had the three guide wires. If you only have a 300 series and you have one guide wire, then of course you'd only be able to adjust one guide wire. If you have a, uh, a 430X, you would only see the two guide wires. And if you're not using one of the guide wires on your 450X or on your 430X, you can always disable them and... Uh, or just let them go and not worry about it. So that's it. That's how you change these settings here, as I said, on the mower itself. And now we'll show you how you change the settings in the Automower Connect app. All right, here's how you want to adjust these settings in the Automower Connect app. First thing you have to do is open up the Automower Connect app. Up in the left-hand corner, when you're on the dashboard, you will see the three-line icon. Tap on this, and it's going to open up a drop-down menu. In this menu, you want to look for Settings. When you find Settings, tap on that to open up the Settings menu. Inside the Settings menu, you want to look partway down the screen for Installation. Tap on Installation, and when you go into the Installation menu, there at the very top, Find Charging Station. This is the option you want to select now to open up all these settings that we were just talking about. Inside the Find Charging Station section, you'll find a description here of how everything works to find a way back to the charging station and the purpose of it and all that stuff. Pretty much all the stuff I explained to you at the beginning of the video using the whiteboard. 
after that, you'll come to your first setting that you can actually change, which is for the charging station signal strength. Here you can choose between minimum, average, and maximum, and as we pointed out at the beginning, there are times where you will have to change the setting. But for the most part, most of you are not going to have to worry about this signal uh, strength setting from the charging station, and you're going to be able to leave that just set at maximum, which is the factory default. Next up in your options are the follow guide wire delay times. First thing you want to do though is make sure that any guide wires you have available are actually turned on and being used by the mower. And in the app, you want to make sure that these sliders over here on the right side are green, meaning that they are turned on and good to go. Then to adjust your delay time, you use the orange dot here on this slider. You slide it to the left to lower the time and you slide it to the right to increase the time. And last but not least, we have the follow boundary wire delay time. And just like the guide wires, you have to make sure that this is switched on. And you read the description there, and they're telling you that you should try to keep this at a 10-minute to 20-minute window there. But as I explained earlier in the video, there are times where, of course, you know, if you adjust this lower, say, 5 minutes, it could be beneficial depending on the complexity of your layout. Uh, there's a lot of variables when it comes to automotors. So to adjust that to either increase the time or lower the time. It works just like the slider for the guide wires where you move it to the right and you're going to lower the time, you move it to the left and you're going to increase the time. All right, so that's how you adjust all these settings and what these settings are for as far as finding the charging station. Hopefully you picked up on this here where you wanna find a good balance between getting your mower back to the charging station in a timely manner so you can get charged back up and back out to mow uh, as quick as possible. But you don't want it just taking the same route over and over again and beating down the grass and creating a track through your yard. So tweak your auto mower after you see what it does or what it can't do and, and uh, just adjust it accordingly. You know, no two lawns are exactly the same and different models have different performance. So it's really going to be up to you to figure out what you need to do and what settings you need to have your mower at to get the best performance out of it. Now, if you have any questions or want to leave any comments, you can do that on this video. You can send us an email at roboticmowerservices at gmail.com. And be sure to check out our website, roboticmowerservices.com. And you can go in there to the tech support section. You can find more videos to help you with any issues you might be having with your automower. And we're always posting and uh, linking new videos on here all the time to help you guys uh, get these problems and issues squared away and get you back up and mowing. So that's going to do it for this video. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to this channel. And thanks for watching.